Hello, David here, and the project for today is repair and maintenance on a Dyson model DC-41 animal. I wonder why they call it the animal. I think it either vacuums like an animal, or if you own a zoo, it's to clean up after your animals. Kind of looks like it was designed around the bowling ball. Anyway, this was brought in to me by my friend John. He said the brush head doesn't work. And uh, I'm going to get into it, see what's going on. But before I get into it, i got to read up on it. And I'll probably make some comments throughout the video about how this compares to the Bissell. And I'm going to put the link to that Bissell video up in the upper right corner here. That Bissell was a Bissell model 16N as in nothing 5-K. I was able to print out this manual from the internet. Let's see what we can learn. Got the usual warnings. I hate these manuals with hieroglyphics and no wording to tell you how to put anything together. I'm not an Egyptologist. I think I know what this means right there. Remove the headphones from your Barbie doll. Barbie doll. Hold on. I think I'm having a flashback. Yeah, I knew a girl named Barbie. She looked just like a Barbie doll. Came from a nice, upstanding religious family. Used to help me with my homework. Yeah, more hieroglyphics. More hieroglyphics. Ah, here's some English. This thing only has two air filters, as opposed to the Bissell that had three. And uh, this HEPA filter is washable. On the Bissell, that HEPA filter had to be replaced. They recommend washing the filter every three months. Uh, I think it's pretty cool that uh, all the filters are washable. So there's no consumables. You don't have to buy anything. This is a bagless vacuum. Clean out the dustbin and wash out the HEPA filter. I think that's pretty cool engineering. This uh, vacuum weighs 17.4 pounds. It's got a 12 amp motor. The brush head is 13 and 3 8 inches wide. It's got a 35 foot power cord and the dirt canister is 5.5 gallons. Not 5.5 gallons. The dirt canister is a little more than half a gallon. It's 0.55 gallon. And it's accessory hose for doing upholstery. Telescopes to 14 feet. And uh, the Bissell, you had to adjust the height of the brush head for different piles of carpet. This brush head has an auto height adjustment, so you don't have to adjust it manually. Let's see if we could duplicate the problem. This switch will turn the motor on. This, this switch will turn the brush head on. But the brush head will not work with the handle in the upright position. It's going to have to be lowered. So, the vacuum doesn't ride on these wheels. The vacuum rides on the bowling ball. And the motor is inside there, and the HEPA vacuum is inside there as well on the other side. These two wheels just support it in the upright position, and they retract when you lower it. See, just like that. Then we put it back up. They drop in position for support. Let's turn the switch on. No brushes. This 
side works. That side does not work. Make sure you unplug the appliance before you begin any work on it. brush head comes off by removing this little C-clip here. Just pops off that easy. Slide the brush head off the body. You'll see that there's two contacts here. Which leads me to believe that there must be a motor in here. So we're going to have to take this base plate off. They only turn 90 degrees. There we go. It's all plastic, so be careful not to crack anything. So this end looks like it clips in here and then swings up. This is a self-adjusting base plate. Yeah, look how bouncy that is. Who doesn't like bounce? Okay, there are four Phillips screws holding these roller retainers in, two on each end. It's a small Phillips, I believe that's a number one. There's a problem. Looks like this end is broken. That's supposed to be attached into that transmission in there. That broke. And that happens if you don't maintain your vacuum cleaner. You gotta clean the dust out of here frequently, especially if you have long hairs or people with animals. This is the part that connects to the motor motors in that housing and from, from what I've heard these individual parts are not available you have to buy a whole brush head it's gonna cost anywhere between 90 and 110 dollars I imagine just because of this little broken part in there let's talk about the maintenance on these uh, it's best to clean this off, that's a Torx head, and remove the, the bearing cap on each roller. And there are steel bearings in there, so you cannot get them wet. If you do get them wet, you have to thoroughly dry, dry it. I don't know if uh, oil is recommended. But this thing isn't rolling that easily. That rolls a lot easier than this. And that's probably what happened. I'll bet there's a bunch of gunk in there. Okay, you're going to need a Torx head T15. There's the bearing in there. Big clock of dust. Well, this looks like Smokey the Cat here. Look at that. That's what'll kill your four hundred dollar vacuum. I have a feeling this bearing needs to be replaced because I think they're sealed for life. I'm not sure if you can wash this out with solvent or not. I 
be cool to try it. I wonder if you could just squirt some penetrating oil in there and then blow it out with air. Because you know when you oil something up, you've got uh, a dust magnet because oil attracts dust. Still doesn't spin that freely. Not like this one. I'm sure there's parts of Smokey the Cat in this one, too. Yeah, a lot of gunk in here. I just removed this bearing cap and shot some penetrating oil in there. Let's see if it's any better. Yeah, that's a little better. Much better. Of course, I'm sure a new brush head comes with these rollers. If they don't, I don't need them. All I need is this part. It seems like a kind of weak design. The piece of plastic that's connected to the transmission is really slender. There is a, a Torx head in there, but it's too deep for my number 15. I, these have to come out in order to clean the hair out of here. So I'm going to have to see if I could find a screwdriver handle Torx 15. I'm going to see if this assembly comes out. There are five T15 Torx screws. So the motor does come out. I don't know if the transmission can be open. But there must be a drive to drive to the motor. There's probably a belt or a chain going to the motor. And there's a bearing in there. That's something else not to get wet. And inside of there, there's a T15 screw to clean this out. This is all I need. <clears throat> Either this motor assembly or the transmission that's inside of there. Well, I found a T10 in the shop that seems like it might fit this. There we go. Just a little bit of hair in there. Still necessitates cleaning. Dang, that's a tight fit. Yeah, it only goes one way. Even though it's triangular, this end of the triangle, whoops. Looks like this end of the triangle got a larger base. So let's match that up. Yeah, I was never good at getting the round peg into the round hole. So that's what you should be doing with an unbroken brush head. Clean it out periodically so that this doesn't happen. Okay, once you get the bearings off the roller, you can certainly get a wet to wash it. But make sure you let it dry for a couple of days. It has to be thoroughly dry because there's no way for the air to circulate in there to dry it out. 
just don't get these caps wet because these are where the bearings are and these bearings do pop out of the cap they could come out and if you can't free up your bearing you can the the roller sets are available separately from the brush head so just make sure they spin like that and I know why my T10 screw fits in these Torx heads. It's because these are T10 screws. See, it's a perfect fit. I've been calling around town to the local vacuum cleaner repair shops looking for parts. And the rumor is true. When this spindle breaks, You have to replace the whole head, even though the motor and motor platform is removable. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to buy a whole new head. Those run anywhere from $75 to $100. And then I thought, I'll give Dyson a call. There's a Dyson repair facility about 10 miles from here. And I went there and they told me the same thing. I had to replace the head. They were selling it for $70, uh, but they didn't have any in stock. He said, you can either order one, or uh, it's not, not in warranty any longer. But he said, wait a minute, let me look around. So he looked around the back through boxes of used parts. He came up with this. A whole new head that'll fit the DC-41. even has the rollers in there. And best of all, he said it was free. I don't know what it is about me. I think people take a look at me and they go, that guy must be homeless and hasn't eaten for two days and probably is not too smart. I think I'll give him a break. Anyway, before I hook this up, I'm going to take it apart, clean it up. I'm going to take the the bearings apart and clean any here that's out of there make sure everything is spinning freely because I certainly don't want that plastic part to break again and I'll put it together and I'm going to do it off camera because I already showed you how to disassemble this and the assembly is the reverse when you want to replace these two spindles the spindles are really tight on the shaft so it's best to insert them at the proper location because they only go on one way and then squeeze them tightly together with both fingers until they uh, bottom out otherwise you'll find that you don't have enough clearance for the rollers on each side I've been calling this thing the roller head but the proper terminology is brush bar it's all cleaned up ready to get reinstalled you have to line up these electronic plug with the plug on the model and it's your option you can keep the retainer clip on or you can add the retainer clip after the installation There it is, let's fire it up. It's working. I notice it steers like a motorcycle where you twist the bowling ball. And that's how you turn. Okay, I'm going to clean the HEPA filter. The HEPA filter is in the ball. You can either have to lay the vacuum on the side or tilt it slightly so the cover will come off. Let's turn this knob counterclockwise until the cover comes off. Here's the HEPA filter. Just turn it counterclockwise. About an eighth of a turn till it comes off. Reverse procedure to get it back on. 
Uh, big thumbs up to the engineers at Dyson for designing a HEPA filter that's washable. As you remember on the uh, the Bissell vacuum cleaner, that HEPA filter had to be replaced. It looks like paper, doesn't it? But it's probably not paper. Let's see the loose dirt that's on there. That's a stubborn piece of dust, isn't it? Rinse with cold water, don't use any soap. Shake the water out really good. It's really important to let this dry for at least 24 hours. You don't want to put anything wet inside a vacuum. I'm going to empty the dust canister. Do that by pushing down on this button on the top. That pushes on this bar. Releases that latch. Let's go. Clean the second filter, pull up on this tab off the handle at the top of the dirt canister. Pull up gently, don't break that plastic. Up comes the filter. This is washable with cold water, no soap. Kind of like milking a cow. This thing doesn't look dirty at all. Squeeze out the water. Let this dry for 24 hours. I think I might let these dry for 48 just to make sure they're fully dry. I'll move them to a warm place. Let's clean out the cyclone. What I'm going to do is take the cap off. Dry these ends off. Carefully, you don't break the plastic. Yeah, see, it comes out one way. It's not perfectly round. So you have to open the top in order to get it out through the hole. Because the hole in here is oblong. You can see a notch in there. See that notch? This you could clean off with a cloth. You don't want to get it wet because water could get trapped in the top in here. Anytime water gets trapped, it gets moldy and starts to smell bad. Down here on the bottom, I'm going to take these gaskets off. There we go. You can see the lip of the gasket fits inside the channel going around the circumference there. Clean that really well. Now for this gasket, see if we can get in closer. Down here, this latch will uh, tear your gasket, so be really careful removing the gasket around that latch. 
There we go. And this gasket does have a shape. There's supposed to be a latch underneath here. Let's see if I can... There we go. This latch has to come out. That latch will separate the canister from the cyclone. So this canister can go out to cleaning. This can be washed out with water. Let's make sure everything is dried very well when you put it back together. And here, this latch has to come out. Just going to pry on that with a screwdriver. There we go. I think I got it out without breaking it. There's a spring on the back of that. This part is a filter. It doesn't look too dirty. A lot of people like to clean this out without dismantling it and then water will get trapped in there and it gets moldy and starts to smell. So you don't want to do that. This part has a series of tabs going around this collar here. So you want to get a screwdriver. Pry that out. I want to get this thing out without cracking any plastic, so I'm going at the end, getting my pick in there to lift this up over the tab, and then pry it out with the screwdriver. Then I'll go to the other end and do the same thing. More to go. Got it. Be mindful of this spring. Can remove this spring. Just like that. Doesn't look too terribly dirty. Looks pretty dirty. Gonna clean that out. Gonna remove this gasket. Careful not to tear it. This white plastic thing. That's held in by friction, and notice there's an index mark right there that matches a, a tab on the body of the housing. Very snug fit. And I see there's some torque screws at the bottom of there. Let's see if I have a driver for it. Another gasket right here. Let's take it off carefully without tearing it. The way this this goes back on, you'll see these three holes that are close together. Those match up with the three holes that are close together in here, which are these three holes. 
This rubber part could come off. And this could get the silicone treatment as well. The rubber parts are clean and dry. I'm going to spray them down with some silicone. Not a sponsor. The silicone to keep the rubber from drying out and cracking. Let it dry several hours and then I'll wipe off the excess. Looks like I missed something. The screen is removable. There's a seam in here that's really tight and it's hard to see. Get a screwdriver under there. Maybe two screwdrivers. Let's go around this lip. Get this out of there. You might have to pry this way too. It's very tight. I was wondering how you clean underneath this screen because you can see a lot of dirt under there. I think it's coming now. There we go. Look at that. And this has an indexing cut out right here which shows that it has to line up with this lip right there. See that? These parts are clean and dry. Let's put them back together again. Gotta find that locating tab on here. There it is, right there. Here's the inset on the basket. Just snaps into place like that. Not for this part. That lines up with this thing. Let's find the three screw holes. And the three screw holes are there. Three screw holes here. Line up like that. Also, you'll notice the cutout. There's a rounded cutout here that you won't see anywhere else. That lines up with this hole right there. So when I line that up, three screw holes line up as well. Just like that. Now I could put the gasket on. The gasket only goes one way. You'll see the three screw holes in the gasket right there and also there's an alignment tab right there that matches this alignment tab right there. Also marked it with a white marker. So that goes on like that. It only goes one way. If you try to do it the wrong way, upside down, let's try it. They got the three screw holes lined up, <clears throat> but it doesn't work. These pedals don't match up. Let's turn it around the right way. Push them down. Remember, this thing's fragile, so don't tear it. Just confirm that you're lined up with that index mark right there, and we are. That's good to go. Next we can fit this piece on. Likewise, we have three holes to line up. They're in there. And if you notice, if you try to put this on and get the screws in, you'll never get your hands down there to get the screws in. So it's my opinion, it'd be better to put the screws in beforehand. These are those Torx bit screws. I 
And remember that hole that was over here? That should line up with this red release paddle. I'm going to go around and start them all and then I'm going to snug them up in a star pattern so that nothing gets warped. We're going to add these parts. This white collar goes on next and you'll notice there's an index mark on it right there. It lines up with the index tab right there. It might be hard to see it. But it's right there. It goes on like this. With this collar facing. Right now it's downward but if you're looking at the vacuum cleaner this collar would be facing upward. On that index mark, which was here and there, it goes there. Okay, the seal goes on the end with the ribbed end. See, there's a smooth end and a ribbed end. The ribbed end goes on first, lines up with the ribs on the plastic. This gasket goes on next. There's an index mark on here. Right there, it's the only one on the gasket. That lines up with this index mark right here, which I painted black with a marker. Next we'll line up this part with this part. We'll see where the release rod goes through here. It's going to line up with this nub on this part. It's pretty much going to go like that. And that little frowny face, that matches up with the indentation on here for the release button. But before we do that we got to put the spring in. So the spring has two legs on it. I'm going to put the spring in there and the leg has to go underneath the paddle. It's actually going to lift out. It's going to push upward and lift out like that. And also, the other end of the spring rides in that notch. See that notch right there? It goes in there. So I can hold the spring in with a screwdriver or a pick. But it still has to be turned around. pushing the paddle out. What if I have the spring upside down? Let's try it this way. And that spring looks the same. Get that end caught in there. Nope, the spring popped out. See if I could get it in with this container in place.
Oh, that spring's not popping out. I gotta do it again. I gotta do it off camera. It turned out that I did have that spring in properly, but the release lever was a little uh, stuck. And I sprayed some silicone in there, and that kind of freed it up a little bit, so it is snapping back like it's supposed to. So I just think it needed a little bit of lubrication. Maybe I should have taken this paddle out and cleaned it better, because I didn't take the paddle out. Let's make sure this is on all the way. All these tabs have to snap into place. There we go. Let's go to this other part. Put these gaskets in. Okay, looks like that rides inside the channel. Let's go around and push the rim into the channel. Next gasket goes one way, the flat spot goes against the hinge. See there's an index mark over here, or an index tab rather, which lines up with a slot right there. Also there's index tabs right here. There's a slot here and a slot there on the plastic cover, and then there's a tab on the gasket, which means I have to Slide it to my right a little bit to get that in. And that rim slides into the channel along here. Careful you don't tear it on these tabs. Watch out for this latch over here. It's easy to tear the gasket on that latch. Also the tab goes in there. Then you have to slide it under. Okay, this is where the rim stops, so there's no sliding under over here. That's for the tab to go in. And then get the gasket out of the way of that hatch. That latch, rather. Squeeze that part in. Sure there's no interference there. That wasn't pushed in all the way. So you can actually see it through the clear plastic. You can see it seating. Just to make sure that it's seated properly. Now we could close it. On this part, we need to put the push button latch in. And this flat side goes against there. Make sure the spring hasn't fallen off because you need that spring on there. The screwdriver seems to get in the way. I just don't have the hand strength for that. Took a bigger screwdriver. Had to get in there like that. And I wedged it out by twisting like that. And that got it to pop in. Now we can put the filter in. And put the top on. I 
and we got to line up these tabs. To get this out of the way. Get that in without breaking any plastic. Okay, I'm in. And this lines up properly. Snap that. Okay, that snap close. Check the movement of that. And the paddle's in the proper position. Put this in. Remember this connecting rod lines up with the paddle. What else lines up? There's an inset in here which lines up with this tab. You see that tab on there? Oh, here we go. This inset in here lines up with this tab on the clear basket. Okay, that's on and we're done. Check out the door. Okay, it's working good. Snap the dirt basket in place. Hey, did I ever clean? <coughs> ever clean that gasket? I guess not. Okay, that's in. And you lift from this handle. Pretty well balanced from that handle. That's a good lifting point. Let's get on to the HEPA filter. Give it like an eighth of a turn clockwise to lock it in. Tighten this knob until it starts clicking. There we go. It's good enough. Let's test it. Go over some of the features on this. Kudos to the engineering department at Dyson. Look at the way they incorporated this handheld upholstery vacuum in there. Just flip that top up. Look how this slides out of the handle. And this hose can really extend a long distance. This extension slides in and out. And that includes this attachment. This is for getting in the crevices. And then you could slide this brush in there for brushing away dirt. And you push on that button to release it. The only problem I see with this is that 
that's the only distance you have to getting into a crevice. This brush doesn't come off any way that I can tell. I mean, you push this button to retract the brush, but I do not see how the brush comes off altogether. I'm sure we can make it come off, but if I did, I would never get it back on. And that goes back in here in one way. This part on here aligns up with the front of the vacuum right there. So it has to go in like this. Very easy to get in and out. It's very convenient. The thing I don't like about the Dyson is the marketing department. That brush head was easy to take apart, but you can't get those parts. You have to buy the whole brush head or roller head or roller brush, whatever they call that thing. So I think they could do a better job marketing their individual parts rather than having force you to buy a whole new brush head which is causing us to, uh, not me, but it's causing other people to just throw their vacuum cleaners in the landfill and buying another one. I thought it only fair to run a comparison test against the Dyson with another vacuum cleaner. If you remember in a previous video I ran a test of the Bissell 16 N5K with the Hoover U4511 and the Bissell was able to clean up a lot of dirt that the Hoover left behind. Of course, of course it was an unfair comparison because the Hoover is a much smaller and much older vacuum cleaner. However, the Dyson should have an advantage. Both vacuum cleaners have bagless dust bowls for collecting dust, but the Dyson I believe has two amps more power in the motor. So I'm going to first clean an area, a small area, with the Dyson. And then I'm going to clean that same area with the Bissell 16 and 5K. Both dust collecting bowls have been cleaned out. So I'll be able to tell right away if the Bissell picked up anything that the Dyson left behind. See how much dirt was in there. Oops. Not a lot. Okay, let's see how the Bissell 16 N5K does.
Ooh, the Dyson missed some stuff. Look at that. Bits of carpet. So the Bissell's a little heavier vacuum cleaner to push around. It's a little bit noisier and it picks up more dust than the Dyson. But the Dyson, I think, is still a, a good vacuum cleaner. And there you have it from the test shop of David GPO. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more great videos. Bye now.